Hello, and thank you for joining us for Raymond's first Empowering Your Practice podcast of 2022. While it's been nearly two years since we first began to see the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare organizations are still dealing with many of the same staffing challenges they faced when it first started and more. Today, we have Raymond Healthcare leaders, Kurt Nuremberg, Danielle Ambrosi, and Matt Barzak here to discuss some of those challenges and how you can position your healthcare practice for success. Kurt, take it away. Thanks, Ashley. You know, even though we're, we're entering into the, to the new year and we're getting kind of rolling in on taxes, I would still say my phone continues to ring on, hey, you know what, you know, this is what I'm seeing in my practice. And I think the biggest complaint right now is truly the, the illness, the effects of COVID and just day-to-day -day operations being affected by, you know, team members really not being able to, to come into work. Are you guys seeing any of uh, this or hearing hearing of this as well? Running into it on a daily basis with clients calling with unexpected daycare closures, exposures, symptoms, you know, everyone is dealing with it every day. You know, in an industry that is usually such a fixed schedule and you kind of, you know, practitioners would leave their office the night before have a pretty good idea of what's going to go on the next day. There's so many surprises now. They wake, they wake up, they go to the office, and now we're managing where they don't even know if they have a team in place to uh, manage that uh, patient flow for the day. I think the biggest thing is, is as we go to go through this, you know, it is so tough running the business, but I continue to tell my docs, one thing you have to continue to do is be empathetic towards what your what your team members are are managing um just dealing with this in their own lives as well yeah especially when you got kids at home you know trying to do school and, and everything else at home and not knowing if if they're going to have school on any given day if they have to be quarantined um one thing i've seen several practices do is start to roll out some type of employee assistance or work-life referral program um, where you might even drop a couple grand in a fund and say, hey, there's this opportunity where any of you can reach out and get counseling on the practice. You have to communicate, you know, what that amount is for the year and hey, it might be replenished once a year and when it's gone, it's gone. But that uh, goes a long, long way as far as providing some goodwill for your employees. So I've had heard some success stories from that perspective. Yeah, I would think, you know, I, the other calls that I get to are realistically, you know, practitioners saying, hey, you know, any other programs out there? I think everybody wants to be able to compensate their team uh, for the time off because the financial burden at home too, but those programs are, are gone, you know? And, um, you know, so some of them, you know, I'll get questions on, hey, if I want to pay this person and not this, you know, I, I tell people adopt a policy and, and live with that consistency. Are you, are you getting some of those inquiries as well? I've been seeing a lot of um, clients offering like a stipend for a day. If they're out with COVID, they'll get a certain stipend per day or allowing people to use their PTO and maybe go negative. And if they were to leave, then they would repay that at that time. But just finding creative ways to make the financial impact not as hard on employees now, like you mentioned, that the IRS funding is gone. Yeah. And staying ahead of changes too, you know, especially at the end of third quarter, I believe it was the IRS removed that benefit of paying the employer when an employee was out sick. Um, if there's changes like that, you know, practices need to make sure they're communicating with the employee, hey, this change is happening. So this is how we're adjusting to that change. We can't afford to pay everyone out of our pocket if you're going to make that change. So uh, you don't want to catch an employee off guard if there's a change and they're treated differently than another employee. I have had practices that have allowed their team members to maybe go negative in their PTO and stuff like that to be able to do that. I just think right now, we, I just urge practices to be, you know, just to work with their employees as much as they possibly can because maintaining a team, maintaining a great team is very difficult. And um, right now it's uh, the hiring pool is very, very, very thin, very lean. Um, what are you guys having for recommendations as, as docs will call and say, hey, you know, I, I need an assistant or, you know, I 
I, I need a PA or what, 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 kind, what types of things are you kind of throwing out there to them for suggestions? I would say from a referral program perspective, that's something we're seeing a lot. I mean, all the employees have, well, not all of them, but a significant number of employees have a wide network, right? And social media and everything else. Um, you know, if, if they do some advertising for you and provide those connections, there's a, a good opportunity for you to also reward them for that and provide an incentive if, uh, if you hire someone. The other important thing to remember is while we're out there aggressively looking for people and the talent pool is low and we're trying to find these new people to add to our team, don't forget about those that have stayed and those that have not left and right. have maintained your team. So make sure they're taken care of as well. It's hard when you're trying to find someone in this tough market and you're offering them higher compensation than maybe you would have in the past, but also make sure to keep keep the people that have stayed in mind and look at their compensation and make sure it's fair and maybe look at increases for them as well. That's a great point. And I think right now we've seen every, you know, inflation hit everything and it's hitting mm -hmm. wages as well. You know, so, um, and then Danielle, I think earlier you kind of mentioned too of, you know, when you and I were talking offline of you have docs that you're encouraging, you know, put together the compensation packages, you know, for these individuals, let them see what they are compensated on a hourly basis, not just the, the amount that hits their paycheck, but the, the benefits, the, the health care, the, you know, retirement, and even some of the care and stuff like that. I think, I think it's a good exercise to go through, not only to evaluate, you know, what kind of changes you have to make for your uh, team members, but also give them an opportunity to see how generous, you know, practitioner, how, how generous as an owner you are with them. So I think it's a, it's a great point. Yeah, a lot of employees out there are seeing that hourly rate and they're making their decisions solely based on that, but they're forgetting, you know, the cost of health care, the cost of the retirement, all the extras that they're getting that they may not get at a new position that they're really not putting that in their decision making and they need to. Yeah. With that rise in inflation too, Kurt, um, you know, it's in, important for everyone to plan for that, you know, that there's incentives for employers uh, through the government, through subsidies and, and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we can't be quick to just spend that money with inflation on the rise, uh, employee costs on the rise. I think it's important to make sure we're planning for the future as well. So our, our margins will be shrinking. Yeah. And just to close the gap on one thought that just came to mind on some of the incentives, I've actually had it to where, you know, if, uh, if you hire if an a current employee brings somebody to you, you hire them, you like them. And I usually get, I've had it to where I've, the doc has paid that employee, you know, even a up to a thousand dollars when they hire them. And then realistically, if that employee sticks around, you know, for another, for 12 months, then I have them pay another, uh, you know, incentive uh, at that point in time, just to kind of get, get the networks going, allow, allow people to help, uh, help with this cause. But the other part of things that, uh, that I'm seeing is patient cancellations and the impact that that's having on practices. Uh, Matt's, what, Matt, what's your thoughts on some of those things? Yeah, as far as cancellation goes, I think it, it puts uh, a huge emphasis on the front desk, make sure you have good help. Um, having that call list uh, where you know who is able to call in on or come in on a quick notice, right? So we have cancellations your front desk should be on the phone, right? Trying, trying to fill that void. Just like the staffing shortages and, you know, exposures and last minute cancellations at work, you're going to see the same thing with your patients. So making you stay on, making sure you stay on top of that to, to know if you have a patient call in last minute, hey, I've been exposed, I can't come in. You have that backup list to call and say, okay, let's get someone else in so we fill that spot and we're not losing that revenue. Yeah, yeah great point. I, I looked at XC right now trying to, switch primary care providers and i was told it's like i can get you in in may you know so i said hey you know just put me on a quick call list and they're like we don't have one and i'm like from that perspective <laughs> i said i go you should get one you know so uh so 100 percent um and probably the last thing i would say as we kind of roll into you know other things that can affect the practices is you know this day with the supply chain and things like that being as tight as it can be, you have your usual, you know, uh, gloves and clinical supplies and things like that. But I know one thing that I have uh, 
within dentistry, which is, I know medicine doesn't quite have the same demand, but then with this is that in dentistry between suction and compressors and things like that, I've told docs, hey, you know what, if those things are getting a little older, you know, use some of the, use some of the savings that you've developed and go order, go get a reserve on hand. That way you're not shut down because of these things either breaking down or completely going to where you can't get parts for it. Because, um, and you know, some docs have been like, hey, you know, I don't, what do I want another compressor on hand for? And it's like, it's like an insurance policy. You're going to need it. You're just upping the time of purchase, you know? So that, that's been something I've kind of recommended to some, some docs as well. And I think one doc, did uh, reap the benefit of that. Um, it's, it's, it's one of a lot, but it's like, at least it was one. It'll pay for itself real quick, won't it? Yeah. You didn't offer to uh, be the maintenance man, Kurt? They don't want, I would end up taking their office down completely with something else I would <laughs> screw up at that point in time. And just the importance of planning ahead. So if you know you have a piece of equipment or something that's going out, look and look at how long it's going to take you to get that so you might not be able to just order and get it in a couple of weeks it might take months now so looking ahead and saying okay i know i'm going to need this soon so go ahead and get that ordered now so that you have it when it when you need it yeah i do think 2022 is going to be a solid year for for healthcare practices um the demand is there unfortunately with a lot of practices i saw in, in january it just had to do with some access to care or people being able to come in due to illness. But I think 2022 um, is set up to be pretty, pretty good years uh, from a revenue standpoint. Now it's just kind of managing uh, the inflationary costs and maybe even assessing some of the reimbursement levels. So, but I think, uh, I think we've covered some things there and, you know, I, I appreciate you guys' uh, guidance. I always love chatting with you and, and brainstorming and uh, look forward to doing these uh, on a regular basis going forward. Uh, you too, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt, Matt, and Danielle. And thank you all for joining us today. The Raymond team is dedicated to keeping you updated on important information for your healthcare practice. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your advisor or contact us at info at for more information. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.